Hey guys, it's Jen from Spanish with Senora Shaw, and I'm here with Secondary Spanish Space today, and I'm going to be talking to you about how to use Edpuzzle to create comprehensible and engaging world language video activities. So today we're going to be mocking out a video for my Spanish ones. I'm making a interpretive um, listening practice for their final exam. So I already found a video that I want to use, but I'm going to talk to you about some different ways you can do things. So when you go to Edpuzzle, you're going to need to create a teacher account. You're going to go to My Content and then over here to Create. You can upload your own video, which I've done sometimes, as you can see over here. I like, we had a snow day. They let the kids out. I had to quickly finish their notes. I guess it was really important to me that day. But most of the time, I just go to New Video. And you can use Edpuzzle's curriculum, and that's going to be going free here really soon, which I think is awesome, or Khan Academy or National Geographic. Most of the time, I just do YouTube. So I've typed in Restaurante Madrid. Uh, our final exam is over, um, like, restaurants and what they're about. So it's similar to the one that they use in the final exam. A little warning about using YouTube. Be very weary of making sure that you can actually your students can actually see the video. So I have different access to videos than my students do. And a couple of times I haven't checked on a student account or on, on a student filter to make sure that they could see stuff. And it's only really been an issue with music videos. But I just want to put that out there that you might, before you spend an hour making an Edpuzzle that's beautiful and perfect, you might just want to make sure it works from the student point of view. So I'm going to click use this video. It's pretty cool. So it's called Restaurantes Madrid. Um, when you first uh, get into creating a quiz, you're gonna, or creating an Edpuzzle, you're going to notice there's a crop option, which it's really easy if you just want to shorten it from the end or shorten it from the beginning. That's how you do that. This one's only three some odd minutes, so I'm going to stick with it as it is. Audio track would be if I wanted to explain something, so it'll talk over something with my voice. The audio notes is a little bit different. And what's really cool is they do the show me how, so it'll show you how to do it, but it'll actually stop the video and it'll have my voice, which I think students are a little more receptive to listening to, well, maybe not, you know what I mean. Listening to directions maybe than reading them, but most of the time I spend on quizzes. So the reason you're using Edpuzzle probably is to hold your students accountable for their, not just watching a video, but gathering information on how they did understanding a video, at least that's our purposes in world language. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this video. So here's about where I would ask my students a question because I've seen something that I want them to use. So your types of questions are open-ended, multiple choice, and you can actually just type a comment that's not even a question, but if you want students to see a text comment, that's how you go about that. Um, so I'm going to ask my students, based on what you've seen, so far, where might you see a video like this? How do you know? And one really cool thing that I think is easy to overlook, and by the way, you can change text and you can add a link and you add pictures and all kinds of stuff, is this feedback button. So after your students answer that question, you could actually give them feedback that might help them to increase their learning. So I'm gonna say, with the social media name tag, I feel like this video would be found on social media, or maybe she is a YouTuber, which is actually the truth. But I think it's important that our students start to think about, like, where would you see this? And that's one of the interpretive tasks that I frequently do. So I'm going to save that, and students will see the question, they type the response here, and then afterwards they would see this feedback. So you wouldn't see that after, and you can edit the question, delete it, or whatever. Let's click continue and add a few more questions just so you can get the feel of things. Okay, so I just want my students to notice something. Did you happen to hear the pronoun she just used? What was it? Where do you think she might be from? And why? So I'm going to give some feedback here. I heard her distinctly say vosotros. And so I might assume she is from Spain. Plus, the title of the video is about... Madrid. And I think that'll help my students start to pick up on those little contextual clues. 
Continue. Están tan sitios chulos de Madrid, sitios para comer, sitios que a ti te parezcan guays. Así que entre todos los sitios guays que hay en Madrid es el que... Ok. So, I just want my students to notice that she keeps talking about these sitios. Notice she keeps saying the word sitios. What do you think she might be talking about? What are some adjectives she uses to describe them? Um, and so I might hear like she says, she says sitios chulos and sitios guay, which I've talked about with my students just because I think it's a funny word that you can really only use in Spain from what I found. Um, and she talks about, eh, let's leave it at that. I don't want to give away the main idea. All right, let's continue. Grado tres, que son Doña Tecla, Raúl y The Toast. Son lo más, a mí me parecen sitios muy chulos que no son excesivamente conocidos, por lo tanto creo que podía descubriros cosas nuevas, que se come muy, muy, muy bien y además para mí son perfectos, uno para ir como de brunch, otro para comer y otro para cenar, aunque esto es... Mi opinión personal, podéis ir en cualquier momento del día. Y como no quería simplemente venir aquí y hablar de ello, os voy a llevar conmigo si os parece bien. Así... Ok, so I'm going to stop it here. What do you think the main idea of this video is? How do you know? <coughs> so I'm going to say the main, and again, students have to answer first. The main idea of this video is to talk about about her favorite restaurants in Madrid. All right. Así que si os apetece conocerlos, ¿a qué estáis esperando? Okay. Let's see if we can ask students a question in Spanish. ¿Qué modo de transporte usa en, or like, va a usar, va a usar en tu opinión? Oops. Ahí está. So, let's see if students can figure it out. Um, I'm going to say, ¿Quién soy que va a usar el metro? The end. Let's save it and continue. El primer sitio del que os vengo a hablar hoy es Doña Tecla. Es un sitio muy chulo porque tienen una terraza cubierta donde si va. Okay. She says, es un sitio muy chulo. Without using a dictionary or anything else. What do you think? She means. And we'll continue. En las de día hay muchísima luz, hay hamacas, hay arbolitos y es muy agradable. Y si vas de noche, como ponen velas, tiene un ambiente increíble. La verdad es que es uno de mis restaurantes favoritos porque los platos son muy, muy especiales. También tienes cosas muy típicas y la calidad es increíble. Yo... Ok, I want to show you how to do a multiple choice question. So, what are some adjectives? she uses to describe the food. I heard increíbles. She says típicas. And what I did there was I turned off the wrong answer. So students can actually select as many right answers as you want them to have. Um, I heard, let's see, I can actually go back and listen some more, I think. I can edit it. So I'm going to save it and then I'm going to go back and re-listen to it. Oh, I have to pick a wrong answer. That's right. So I'm just going to say hello and I can change that after. Tiene un ambiente increíble. La verdad es que es uno de mis restaurantes favoritos porque los platos son muy, muy especiales. También tienes cosas muy típicas y la calidad es increíble. Okay, so you get the point. We just have to select a wrong answer. And you can add as many questions as you want, as often as you want. And you can, again, don't feel like you can't drop students an audio note 
um, or drop students a comment just so that you can help them out. Like sometimes I just like want to tell my students, notice what she says about the quality of the food here. This might be a term you want to use in your presentational writing. And I think it's important that students don't feel as pressured. And so that's that's what I really like about Edpuzzle is students can go back and they can rewatch stuff, they can re-listen to it. And I actually sometimes give grammar notes um, and I talk about that in the blog a little bit on Edpuzzle. And the reason I do that is because students will tell me like, I go back and listen to those notes or I actually went back and listened to your notes a couple years later because I was confused about that topic and I'd forgotten what you said. And I think it's just really important that the Edpuzzle does such a nice job of making videos comprehensible and differentiated and engaging and it just does it really well. And hey, it's free, so why not? Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me an email, Spanish at, or Spanish with Senora Shaw at Gmail. And feel free to comment on the blog post. Thanks for participating.